time we hit it, we make it more powerful. We can't attack. What are you saying? I'm saying it's unkillable. Let's hop into it. So what does Donald Trump do? He's been stripped from the ballot, right? He's been ripped off the ballot. Donald Trump, maybe we can put up a headline. Donald Trump disqualified. He's removed from the ballot in Colorado. Amazing how they make all drugs illegal in Colorado and then ever, the Supreme Court justices clearly take all of the drugs and then make a ruling like this. We're going to break it all down. So we do our very best on this program. It's our obligation to you for you to be informed. We want you to be informed about what's happening uh, in the world around you and also to know what is a PSYOP. Our, our alarm bells started screaming last night when I when I read this. Because there's just no way, it's just, it doesn't work, right? Constitutionally, we live in a constitutional republic. So, like, state Supreme Courts on a 4-3 decision can't just be like, no, you can't want for office. We are the ones who make the ruling. It doesn't work that way, right? The Constitution says you got to be of a certain age, 35. You have to have uh, be a natural-born American citizen. And you need to have lived here for 14 years. Those are the stipulations for running for president. Article two, right at the very top. Okay, we know our constitution. We read it all the time. And so how could a state Supreme Court make this ruling? Oh man, and then we started looking into it and it's just really, it's just a thing of beauty. Okay, so let's break it all down. I, I, wanna, I wanna just off the top here, break this down because you're gonna see all these headlines. Pop the headline up, Royce. You're gonna see all these headlines. Trump's disqualified, he can't run for president anymore. This is meant to infuriate you. It's meant to enrage you. And they're doing this right before the holidays so that you go, you get drunk with your family and the Fed who's in your Patriot group chat pops off and says, you should do something dumb. And I don't want you to do something dumb. Don't fall into their trap. I'm begging you. I wanna cut to the quick here. I'm begging you to not fall into their trap, all right? So let's start with how they can't actually do this, all right, to begin with. This is Mike Davis, who will be joining the program in a moment, uh, putting up what the actual 14th Amendment, Section 3, has to say. This is really, really important. Then we're going to read the actual ruling itself. So this is a post-Civil War amendment to our Constitution, U.S. Code, 18 U.S. Code, Section 2383, Rebellion or Insurrection. Whoever incites, set foot, or assists and engage in any rebellion or insurrection against the authority of the United States, therefore gives aid or comfort thereto, shall be fined under this title, imprisoned no more than 10 years, or both shall be incapable of holding any office under the United States. All right. A couple of quick important things here. Because uh, they're disqualifying. They're saying that Trump is disqualified, and by they... I mean a 4-3 decision, a narrow decision with the Supreme Court justices, and it's, it's too good when you piece it all together. The Supreme Court justices on the Colorado Supreme Court, every one of them has been appointed by a Democrat. So what's the differentiator between the four that voted to do this insane thing that's clearly unconstitutional and illegal and the three that voted against it? Well, a state college versus an Ivy League. All four who voted to rip Donald Trump from the ballot went to the Ivy Leagues all of these justices. This reeks, reeks of something we talk about the show on the show all the time, which is the elite despising the American people. Their pure disgust that they have to live in a country with you and me. I went to a community college. I went to a cheap state school. They think they're better than you. They think that they should decide, not you, who rules this country. And that everything would be better with rule of the oligarchs. With a kleptocracy. Where they're in charge and you get nothing. You eat the bugs, you live in the pod, you live in the slop that they give you, and that's what you deserve. Because you didn't go to Harvard. Because you didn't go to Yale. Because you don't have friends at McKinsey. That's what this, the, the real core of all this is that you don't have the rights based on the America that they want to create. You have no rights. We, the American people, the hoi polloi, the taxpayers, the chattel, we are dis, dis, repugnant to them. 
and they hate you. And they hate that our constitution gives us rights and gives us the ability to actually choose our leaders. And that means that we might choose people and often do who they don't want. That's the real differentiator here between the, the justices. You can see there on your screen. Thank you, Royce, for putting those up. All four of those justices went to Ivy Leagues. The other three went to the law school at the University of Denver. They're all Democrats, so that's not the differentiator. It's not political lines that separate them. It's the fact that some of those justices are more connected to the actual people they represent. The other four were happy to disenfranchise the people of Colorado, which is what they've done. Here's what they've done, all right? Let's go back to the uh, the actual article that they're, 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 they're citing here. Okay, disqualification under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment requires a federal criminal conviction with evidence beyond a reasonable doubt, a unanimous jury, a conviction upheld on appeal for rebellion or insurrection under 18 U.S. Code 2383. Anything short of this is illegal and very dangerous. What they did is illegal. Also, you'll notice that the language of this states that there, it, that an officer, what, is it, what does the term officer mean? Do you say Mr. Officer to your senator or congressman or president? No. Officer means this is a statute that's written for military times. This is a militant statute statute written for people that literally took up arms against the American Republic. Military officers. It was intended for Confederate generals, people who killed Union soldiers, who insurrected, literally a violent insurrection. Not a guy who said march peacefully to the, to the Capitol. And the Capitol had already been breached before he was even done speaking. So how are you holding Donald Trump accountable for that? Well, there, there, there is actually no accountability here. And th this is why it's a, a PSYOP, okay? It's a PSYOP one because it's patently illegal on his face. Donald Trump has not been charged with insurrection. Donald Trump's being charged 91 different times. And not one of them is for this statute. Not one. Nothing. They've never been able to come up with one thing to charge him for on insurrection grounds. They haven't charged him for this. He hasn't gone to trial for this. He hasn't been found guilty of this. He hasn't lost on appeal. So they can't, they literally can't do this. Okay, but it's not even, we're just scratching the surface for how bad this ruling is, okay? And we're going to get into the ruling here. I'm going to read you the ruling. We're going to put it up. In fact, toss it up. Toss it up on the screen. We've got the ruling right here. You can see it for yourself. And we've read the ruling. And boy, this thing is uh, embarrassing. But there is one part that is particularly egregious and why I want to get to the actual core of how this is a PSYOP and how this is intended to actually get you to, to, to smart off and get like good, hardworking Americans, patriots to do something silly or stupid. Or to give the feds who are going to, <laughs> the feds who are already like planning on maybe running a false flag operation, the cover of saying we did this because of the Supreme Court ruling. Ladies and gentlemen, buried in this ruling, on the ninth page, let's go to page nine here, is a in, just unbelievable, laughable, get out of jail free card for the Supreme Court in Colorado. Okay, here we go. I'm going to read to you. Therefore, to maintain the status quo pending any review of the U.S. Supreme Court, we stay our ruling until January 4th, 2024, the day before the secretary's deadline to certify the content of the presidential primary ballot. So let's take that. Let's just take that line piece by piece. They're saying this ruling doesn't apply and that Donald Trump is still on the ballot. That it doesn't apply until like the filing deadline, which is January 4th, 2024. So they're staying their own ruling. They're setting aside their own ruling until like the hours before the deadline. So, so why are they doing that? If review is sought in the Supreme Court before the stay expires on January 4th, then the stay shall remain in place until the secretary will continue to be required to include President Trump's name on the 2024 ballot. It's fake. Sorry, I, I try not to yell. It's not real. This is intended to infuriate you. This is intended to get dumb people to do dumb things. Don't be one of them. This is fake. This is intended to give hopium catnip to libs, and we'll play you their insane theories on this, this is intended to effectively get the Supreme Court justices like invitations to cocktail parties 
or to get cheer cheers right by their lunatic pink haired neighbors, blue haired neighbors to get applauded on the view like the lobotomized clapping seals. It's not real. Let me read it to you again. This is directly from the document. And by the way, you shouldn't be tuning into people that don't actually do this work. You should be tuning into people that actually look through the doc, read through these documents that are not here to incite you. Like if someone's out there trying to inflame you, they're a fed. If someone's out there trying to say that this is like the end of democracy, this thing, they're a fed. Okay. Don't listen to those people. Go to people that actually do the homework and are trying to like actually work this out. All right, here we go. If review is sought by the Supreme Court, which was a guarantee, Donald Trump last night sought review at the Supreme Court. It is like saying the sun will rise in the east and set in the west. Of course, Donald Trump's gonna seek review of the Supreme Court. What do you think Donald Trump, of all people, are gonna just be like, oh, well, that's so, that's, terrible. I just, I'm just not going to be allowed to run a run on the, on the ballot. Boy, they got me this time. Do you think that's what Donald Trump's going to do? Maybe that's what Mitt Romney would have done. Bent over, put himself in a dog cage and popped himself up on the top of his own car and driven across the country. Maybe that's what Paul Ryan would have done. That's what John McCain would have done. John McCain deporting himself would have been like, oh, I'm so, th I'm sorry. I'm going to go hang out with my my ISIS friends in Syria now. You got me. You got me. No, not Donald Trump, obviously. Duh. So it's already get baked into the cake that if this goes to the Supreme Court, then the entire ruling is stayed and Donald Trump goes back on the ballot. So the, it, there was an escape hatch built into this thing. You're reading it right there. This isn't hopium or copium on my end. This isn't me trying to say it. You, it's, it's in black and white on your screen. If this goes to the Supreme Court, then the secretary will continue to be required to include Trump's name on the presidential primary ballot until receipt of any order or mandate from the Supreme Court. And who's on the Supreme Court? Uncle Clarence. Uncle Clarence is ready. We tweeted a photo last night. I don't know if we got that photo. At the activate the activate Clarence photo, uh, Uncle Clarence is ready um, to absolutely eviscerate this ruling, and and and, and it, they're going to do it because of something very important. They're going to do it because of something that is far uh, less opaque than the Fourteenth Amendment. Nobody knows what the Fourteenth Amendment is. No one's ever been disqualified based on the Fourteenth Amendment, right? Like no, no, no nothing's ever. This has never happened before. Again, this is meant for the Civil War when people actually took up arms and fought against the United States of America. And also a, an interesting little Civil War note here. The last person to have been stripped from the ballot was Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln was stripped from the ballot in multiple slave states. They refused to let Abraham Lincoln be on the ballot. Abraham Lincoln won the Electoral College anyway. So th the last person they did this to was Abraham Lincoln, effectively. And it was the slave states doing it. Democrats are back at it again. This is a regressive ideology. Clarence Thomas is going to destroy this, and he's going to destroy this for a very specific reason uh, that is, again, far less opaque than some statute inside of the 14th Amendment. So there are like, th so there are your first four reasons why this is, in th this is obviously not real. OK. Reason number one, Donald Trump's never been charged with insurrection. Reason number two, Donald Trump is not a military officer. Reason number three, Donald Trump didn't insurrect anything. Donald Trump said, go march peacefully. Reason number four, they built in a statute that says this isn't real into the into the ruling. If it's appealed at the Supreme Court, well, then, then, then it all goes away. Reason number five. This one is the big one, ladies and gentlemen, because what this really goes at is not the 14th Amendment, the First Amendment. The First Amendment. Donald Trump not only has a right, has an obligation in the First Amendment to redress his government of grievances. It's baked in that you are allowed to picket and to disagree. 
you actually have the ob- you have the right not the right the obligation to go and to redress your government when you think that a fraudulent stolen election is a fraudulent stolen election it is your obligation as a citizen of the American Republic to do that that is in the first amendment that is what the first amendment says of course buckle into that right that supersedes that right is freedom of speech and that is all that Donald Trump is guilty of here Donald Trump's guilty, and you can see it in the ruling. They say that Donald Trump doesn't have a freedom of speech. In this ruling, they say that Donald Trump was outside of his bounds of freedom of speech as the effing president of the United States to say that election was rigged, that election was totally crooked, and that you should go march peacefully to the United States Capitol to redress your government of grievances. The ruling itself denies Donald Trump free speech. So in case you're wondering what Clarence is going to do to this thing, you're going to look at the superseding. Each amendment is sort of like a superseding amendment. This is why it's so important that the second amendment is number two. Each amendment sort of protects the next one above it or below it as you go through the Constitution. So when you're directly attacking the First Amendment to try and like say that the 14th Amendment is going to deny a guy who has every right to run for president and every voter the right to vote for him, uh... You, you're done effed up, okay? You, you, you're done. You're done. You haven't, you, you're finished. Clarence, it's going to be a 9-0 ruling against this thing. Uncle Clarence is going to take this to the woodshed. And it ain't going to be pretty. He's going to get the belt off. He's going to take his belt off. He's going to get the wrench. And you're going to take this thing out to the woodshed. Because you're, what you're really going after is the First Amendment. And we have proof of that, actually. We have proof. Because what you are opening up here, as Democrats always do, is a absolute hell on earth for any American that ever disagrees with their government. And most of those Americans are Democrats. And what do I mean by that? Well, up until a few years ago, the phenomenon of questioning the results of an election ex- existed exclusively on the left until they had w- until they had twisted the wires of our me- election mechanisms harshly enough that they get their results automatically. And it'll take us another 40 hours to go through the election fraud mechanisms that happen in our election. But... Ladies and gentlemen, we have plenty of evidence of that. Where's the evidence? Okay, we'll show, we'll show you the evidence. But that's not what this show is about. This show is about, and I know this is going to be painful for me to say, protecting Hillary Clinton, protecting Stacey Abrams, protecting Al Gore. As much as I like to make fun of those people, and as much as I think those people are have wrecked uh, America, with their viciousness and their seething and their saltiness of being incapable of accepting election results. I don't think they belong in jail. Given this ruling in Colorado, Hillary Clinton needs to go to prison. Hillary Clinton should never be allowed to run again. Same with Stacey Abrams, same with Al Gore, same with Joe Biden. Joe Biden himself must be stripped from the White House. Now, that may be a fun, like, fantasy that I'd love to live in. But the reality of that is a despotism, is a dictatorship. And I do not wish to live under a despot. We have the proof, by the way. We have it all queued up and lined up. Every Democrat serving today has denied an election, which is at its core, Donald Trump, what they have found him guilty of. Donald Trump saying that election was stolen, that election was rigged. Everything was crooked in this election. Democrats have said the exact same thing about corresponding elections. And what the Colorado Supreme Court has done now is open up the door. If the Supreme Court doesn't actually put like if the Supreme Court does not actually like put the stake into the heart of this diseased communist zombie, then what the Colorado Supreme Court has done is open the door for any Republican leaning Supreme Court across the nation 
to put Hillary Clinton in jail, to deny every Democrat that has ever said that George Bush didn't win in 2000 or Hillary Clinton won in 2016 or Donald Trump stole the election, to ban them all from the ballots forever and to ban Joe Biden from the ballot. And we have the evidence of that. Roll it. You can run the best campaign. You can even become the nominee. And you can have the election stolen from you. It's an interference, though. That's, That's a real what thing. I'm scared about no, in 2020. But, but rightly. Because right. I think he's an illegitimate president that didn't really win. So how do you, you know, fight against that in 2020? You are absolutely right. He is an illegitimate president in my mind. Would you be my vice president? <laughs> Folks, look, I absolutely agree. Trump knows he's an illegitimate president. The president-elect, although legally elected, is not legitimate. I don't see this president-elect as a legitimate president. You said you believe that Russia's interference altered the outcome of the election. I do. We have a president who, if in fact it is proven, uh, has been assisted by the Russians and may in fact not be a legitimate president. The one thing that Trump is fearful of uh, when it comes to his being president is that finally we will see how illegitimate his victory actually was. I have an objection. I object to the 15 votes from the state of North Carolina. I object because people are horrified. He's an illegitimate president. Do you believe Trump is a legitimate president? What I believe is that there's no question that the outcome of this election was affected by the Russian interference. But there absolutely is a cloud of illegitimacy. Yes, I want Hillary Clinton to go to jail. I want to be very clear about that. Yes, I want Hillary Clinton to go to prison, not for free speech. Be smart. Let's be smart together as a movement. Yes, Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden belong in prison, not because they committed acts of free speech. They have a right to say whatever they believe or whatever they think about an election. And if that right is fueled by wine, walks in the woods with bags of Chardonnay and by like the salty tears that they cry into their goblet of Chardonnay as they wobble through the woods. Well, you know what? They're an American too. And so they have a right to free speech. And damn it all, Donald Trump does as well. If this stands, it means that politicians no longer have a right to free speech. It means that judicial fiat Justices from Ivy League schools can come in and say, here's what you must say or can't say, and here's what you must believe and can't believe. And if you don't believe what I believe, me, the Harvard educated, Yale educated, prick justice, put them up on screen again. These lun these lunatics. And particularly the the la the lady with like the there, the one down in the bottom left. If you don't believe what I believe. This, there you go, right there. Yep, zoom in on her. What this ruling is, and let's just put it to bed right now. What this ruling is, and why this thing is going to go into a Guantanamo level torture chamber with Clarence Thomas, doing all sorts of mean things to it with his gavel, is... That person on your screen right now, this justice on your screen right now, this vicious, partisan, salty, unhappy, degenerate, this person who thinks she is better than you, who hates you, who thinks she's smarter than you, smug, arrogant, shops at Whole Foods, pretentious jackal, this goblin, what this ruling means is that she is going to tell every politician what they can and cannot say. If this ruling is allowed to stand, then this person is allowed to tell every politician what you're allowed to say and what you're allowed to think. And then if the politician doesn't say and think as this vicious woman demands, then they will be stricken from the ballot. And you as an American people will be disenfranchised because you're not allowed to vote for somebody who disagrees with this justice. Justice. With this activist. Understand that that is the more, the absolute total nut of this ruling, the mooring upon which this ruling is grounded. Elite hatred of you. Elite hatred of our nation. We're a constitutional republic. What does that mean? We're not a direct democracy. 
If we were a direct democracy, there'd be no electoral college. There'd be no Senate. We are not a direct democracy. Not even the House is a direct democracy. There are some members of Congress that represent 200,000 200, people, and there are some members of Congress that represent well over a million people. That's not a direct democracy. It is a constitutional republic. In our constitutional republic, rules dictate who can run for president. And Donald Trump matches, fits all of the rules, period. That woman, that vicious, partisan, seething, unhappy, miserable cat woman, she wishes to say that I am in charge. By the way, this woman is not elected. This is an appointed position. So an appointed Ivy League elitist says, you are, you must think and say what I tell you to think and say. And if you do not, then I will disenfranchise the voters who wish to vote for you because I hate them too, by proxy. There it is. And there's your legal theory. And there's your breakdown here. And this is why this thing is going to um, meet an old yeller fate at the Supreme Court. Uncle Clarence is taking this dog out back on a chain right now. Understand that. But this is the precedent that they're setting. And finally, I'll say it once more. The only point of this ruling, this narrow ruling, is to piss you off. It's to act as a cover for whatever psyop they have planned, for whatever false flag they have planned, and to then do a, a, a January 6th again. Don't give them the ammunition. Don't give them the capacity to do that. Be smart. Be educated. Act. Do not act the fool. And understand that this entire thing is meant to piss you off. And why? Because of this. Look at the polls. Look at the polls. They got nothing left. They got nothing left. What happens when Orange Hitler beats you? What happens when your threat to democracy, meaning threat to your own power, dominates and gets 350 electoral votes? What does that mean about you? That means you're done. That means your time is done here. You have no more control. You have no more power. They can't live inside of that world. They must do everything possible. They'll burn the place down. See what's happening at the border? They're burning the country down. If they can't rule it, they'll torch it. They're Nero. They're our modern day Nero. You think about the Roman Empire as much as I do? They're the modern day Nero. If they can't rule the place, they'll burn it to the ground. They have seen what's about to happen to them. What happens when Donald Trump wins? Not by a little, by like a landslide. What does it say about them? What does it say about their power? It means they're done. No more money, no more parties, no more WEF invitations. It means that the the the, le the center left leadership globalist cabal is finished. They have been spat out. It's over. And so they must do everything they can. They must do everything they can to stop it because they, th their own existence depends on them stopping Donald Trump. Donald Trump's reaction to all of this yesterday, uh, pitch perfect. Listen. It's no wonder Crooked Joe Biden and the far left lunatics are desperate to stop us by any means necessary. They are willing to violate the U.S. constitutions at levels never seen before in order to win this election. Joe Biden is a threat to democracy. It's a threat. They're weaponizing law enforcement for high-level election interference because we're beating them so badly in the polls. Yes, this was all brought by a, of course, a Soros-funded anti-democracy organization called Crew, whose only only goal is to sit there and write, uh, effectively, uh, fan fiction, like constitutionally warped fan fiction as to how to ban Republicans from speaking or from running for office. Fannie Willis in Georgia just plagiarized what this organization crew, Soros-funded organization, with these pseudo-scholars put together for her to charge Donald Trump. The left is so much more advanced than our side is on this, on lawfare. They cannot beat Donald Trump in the polls 
So they must beat him in lawfare. And so they have these infrastructure funded and ready. Republican billionaires, where are you? Republican, I mean, we, we, we're, we're building a brand new Republican party. If you saw America Fest and you saw what we were doing uh, in Phoenix, we're building a new Republican party. We're just behind the eight ball. When you are a seething communist and your entire, the entire point of your being is power and you have no family, you have no God. I mean, there's a God and you'll be judged by him, but you don't believe there is. All you have is this, is this earth and the conquering of it. Well, then you become a lunatic. You become obsessed with this. So while the rest of us are focusing on our family and like our children and our communities, these people are just obsessed with power. That's all they think about. And so they create these mechanisms and these organizations to go and do this. It doesn't really, it doesn't really like, uh, it doesn't really come to, uh, we don't even think about these kind of things. Wait, I should sue to keep Joe Biden off the ballot? Joe Biden has insurrected far more than Donald Trump. Joe Biden deserves to be stripped from the ballot. I can make that argument simply. I will put up the 1964 Immigration Act, which Joe Biden has reaffirmed multiple times in his Senate career. The 1964 Immigration Act says it is illegal for anyone to enter our country that is a foreign national without an invitation. Straight up, you are committing a felony. And every second you spend here in this country is compounding that felony. Joe Biden signed that act. Joe Biden is not enforcing that act. That is an act of insurrection. That is an act that is directly using our military against our American people by opening up our border and saying and doing nothing, saying and doing nothing and allowing it to happen. There's your insurrection. So Joe Biden should be stripped from every ballot in America based on this precedent. But Republicans don't put that legal theory together because we don't even think about we don't have the, the depravity the sick authoritarian depravity, the blood dripping, drooling sickness. We aren't, we aren't such pigs, such despotic pigs that we don't think like that. We were meeting with a big time social media platform, a platform that we publish on uh, this weekend. And we were meeting with agents of that platform um, you know, you just meet and make sure that you are aware of what's happening in 2024 and that you connect and that, you know, all things are good and that you're, you know, non violative and what you're doing. And th these kind of things have to go on. And the agents of that platform told me, you have no idea the infrastructure that the left has to try and cancel people like you. You have no idea how many requests we get per day to try and take you down. And they are sophisticated in it and they are funded and they are weaponized and they go through every little thing to try and like rip you and people like you offline. And all day we get requests from them to try and take, to try and destroy the entire ecosystem of the right, free speech. And I say, yeah, I have no idea because that doesn't cross my mind. It doesn't cross my mind to try and take down Rachel Maddow. I would never like fund an organization that's trying to like eliminate the right for AOC to speak. AOC speaking is the best thing that ever happens to me. It's great content. I love it. Let Joe Biden or Kamala Harris walk to any microphone anywhere. Let them talk. I think it's the greatest thing ever. I wouldn't have any content if they didn't do that. But the left are such vicious cancel pigs. They're so antithetical to the nation that we have built here. That there is this well-funded, who knows how much money is being spent, but clearly tens, hundreds of millions of dollars being spent to try and cancel shows like this. Coming after the ability for us to simply speak, the ability for us to simply vote. That's what we truly face. Ladies and gentlemen. So that's what's happening. George Soros, a foreign-born billionaire, is attempting He's like in his eight, he's like in his eighties or nineties, attempting with his final and his final breaths to to destroy this. He's always wished to destroy this nation, and he's huh, he's coming within 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 shot of it. Right when you're ripping the leading candidate from the ballot, you're coming close. When you're getting courts to take the leading candidate for the Republicans off the ballot, your chief threat your chief rival from the ballot saying you can't run for office, you're getting close. 
to destroying whatever's left of our constitutional republic. Watch. The Colorado lawsuit was filed by a Soros-funded outlet, decided by an all-Democrat-appointed Supreme Court, and the Democrat Colorado Secretary of State, within a split second, was celebrating on MSNBC. Look, I believe he incited the insurrection. There were big questions around Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, and the Colorado Supreme Court has weighed in in a very loud way. Section 3 of the 14th Amendment has to apply to the presidency, because if not, it's a get-out-of-jail-free card. That's the Secretary of State for Colorado. How lost is that state? How communist is Colorado? If you want to actually stick it to Colorado, and you live there, then go and register as a Republican right now. If you're an independent and you believe that you should have the right to vote for whomever you want, you may not even like Donald Trump. That's what they are doing. They're disenfranchising you. Then vote these vicious goblins out. Register as a Republican now. Ty Cobb, uh, who is a uh, U.S. district, uh, U.S. Uh, attorney, saying this thing is going to be headed for absolute and total immolation at the Supreme Court. This will be a 9-0 ruling against. Praise God. Let's manifest that. Go. The president or the vice president are included as an officer or included within uh, the admonitions of the Constitution. They are typically highlighted, like in the impeachment clause, which specifically says president vice president. Um, So I think this case will be handled quickly. I think it could be 9-0 in the Supreme Court for Trump. Uh That's what we're predicting, ladies and gentlemen. Greg Jarrett on Fox News dropping absolute based bombs saying, nope, this is election rigging. That's what's actually happening. They're rigging an election. Watch. Yeah, this is election rigging, Kaylee. Uh, It was a narrow four to three decision. It will almost certainly, in my judgment, be overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court because the insurrection clause in the 14th Amendment, as you point out, don't apply to the facts here. It was intended to prevent Confederates who literally took up arms against the government during the Civil War from holding office. So you fast forward now 150 years, roughly, and Donald Trump is not even accused of insurrection under the federal statute. And if evidence supported that, surely Jack Smith, the special counsel, would have charged him with it. So to remove Trump from the ballot for an offense that he hasn't even been tried or convicted of, what is that? Well, that's violating his right to due process, which just happens to be guaranteed by the very amendment, the 14th, and elsewhere in the Constitution. Don't you understand, you despotic goblin pigs? what you're doing here and how this will be used against you. Do you not, do you not understand it? Do you not know? Are you so daft? Are you so thick that you can't get it? Listen to two Democrats talking on a a channel called News Nation, right? It's a cable news channel. Two Democrats talking about this saying, holy, like, holy smokes. Like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. It's Chris Cuomo and Leland Verrett saying, like, how does the court do this? Watch. Insur- insurrection, though, is a crime, right? I mean, there, there is crimes that you can commit. It is now. Right. So how does a court, though, how do you, you want to get down to the very basics of due process. How does a court say that this person, Donald Trump, committed a crime for which he's not been charged with? Jack Smith didn't charge him with insurrection or any of these crimes related. And then says not only is he not been charged with it, but he is now guilty of it without the ability to provide a defense or call witnesses in your own defense or any of the other provisions and provided for you? Quick two-part answer. First, Jack Smith, I do not believe, is going to go back and charge him with this now, Right. by the way. So I don't think that's going to happen. Um, second, the tricky thing is the, the answer should be they can't. That's not how it works. However, in this one provision, it doesn't deal with the crime of insurrection. It's talking about activity that had been the Civil War. Right. They did not foresee it being used this way. And I think it's going to be litigated. And I think that the Supreme Court, especially in its current composition, is going to say, let the people decide, put them on. Because it's not like impeachment. Impeachment's done. Disqualification can be appealed in court. And that's what he's going to do. 
what we are seeing right now is nothing short of the election rigging from a judiciary that wishes to throw matches into a powder keg that is already broken in our country and to try and say definitively mask off moment you don't have a right to choose your leaders we'll choose your leaders your leaders don't have a right to free speech we'll tell them what is free speech and what is not and most importantly you don't have a right to defy us because that's ultimately what Donald Trump is. Donald Trump is a massive, flaming, orange Cheeto middle finger to the elites that believe they are better than us.